So there's something you need to know. I'm allergic to yard work. I mean, I don't think it's an actual, legit diagnosis, but it seems plausible, right? So welcome to episode 8 of I Have No Idea What I'm Doing, a weekly video series produced by some guys in Texas that figure if we just get a louder megaphone, you'll believe we're experts in something. So getting back to my lawn, I enjoyed having decently manicured, and I'm most definitely quick to judge when my neighbors get a little lax with theirs, but when it comes time for me to gas up my Troy belt, I'm apt to find any excuse to avoid my fate. And it's not that mowing is all that hard, but my lawn is three strikes against it before I ever pull the cord. First, it's St. Augustine grass, which by look and feel is awesome. It's thick, it grows fast, it heals itself, and it's hardy. On the contrary, all those great positives quickly become negatives when you actually have to cut it. Second, I live in the southern U.S. My mowing season typically runs from March until late October, and I can recall a few times where a February and or November cut was necessary as well. The only season I can safely assume longer than my lawn maintenance routine is the never-ending one known as NASCAR. And finally, from late May until late September, it's just plain hot where I live. A couple of years ago, we set a record for the most consecutive days over 100 degrees in the history of our region, and that's not really a record worth bragging about. Thankfully, we're still early enough in the season right now that we haven't hit that mark, but honestly, having to walk behind a gas-propelled engine in anything over 900 degrees is uncalled for. And I get that this is most definitely a first world problem, so stick with me here. So a couple summers ago, I was doing my weekly sweat drench laps to the front yard when I started to question the need for me to actually open the gate and continue on into the back. I was about two thirds of the way through and fully aware of how little I was enjoying this process. I was also dreading the fact that in total, I wasn't even halfway through since the backyard was still ahead and I like mowing it even less. Mostly because I know nobody driving down my street can actually see it or knows what it looks like. Admittedly, the backyard got relegated to the every other and sometimes every third mow as compared to the weekly spin that the front yard got. I knew opening the gate meant another 20 minutes or so was in my future and that skipping it all together meant that I could be indoors with some ice cold water in less than three. So my conundrum? The backyard needed to be mowed and I severely lacked the motivation to make it happen. Fortunately, and for the first time in a long while of mowing, Motivation discovered me that day. As fast as I had written off the need for trimming the backyard, my sentiment changed and I became more inspired than ever to do it and do a decent job of it as well. So what changed? My perspective, I suppose. You see, in searching for some glimmer of motivation that day, I realized that while I mow my front yard for my neighbors, the reason I mow my backyard is for my boys. I'm not a huge outdoors person, it's mostly because I'm a testing ground for every mosquito within a four mile radius. But my boys quite enjoy the comfortable confines of our backyard. They jump on the trampoline, they dig in the dirt, they swim, they shoot hoops and BB guns, climb the trees, and possibly the most important thing to my oldest, they play hours upon hours of baseball with anyone who will pitch to him or play catch with him. Needless to say, they're much more important to me than the neighbors, and my responsibility to them is much greater as well. So the answer was there all along, but it just took a small perspective change in me to see it. I wasn't asking the right question. I was only motivated by what others could see from the front, on the outside. That makes me wonder though, how often do we manicure those things in the front yard? The ones on the outside are in plain view, for everyone around to see while we forget or neglect the more important things that they don't actually get a front row seat to. How many Instagram or Snapchat filters do we need to make sure our life looks just right for others? How many pairs of Cole Hans do I need, or Range Rovers should I be chasing, knowing that the root cause of desire for them is just so that others will notice. Alternatively, how many times do we beat ourselves up over not having the life we see others projecting through their social media channels? Maybe we're just seeing their front yard. For me, it's more often than I'd like to admit. And what about other areas of life? Your work, your spiritual well-being, your continuing education, your relationships? It's easy to get caught up in the front yard stuff, but oftentimes the backyard is where we have and we hide the more important things. So this week I'll ask, are you worrying about the externals when there's some internal things that need to be dealt with or nurtured? I'd encourage you to examine C. Motivation no longer eludes me. This week, I'm mowing the backyard. Until next time.